Hello and welcome. This is Vanessa Graulich, and today we're going to talk about the math behind owner financing. Let's do some math. Now, when does owner financing happen? Well, sometimes you have investors that have cash, they have proof of funds, they have proof that uh, you know they're stable, that means that maybe they have a really good uh, job, maybe they have a really good corporation that you know brings them money, whatever the reason it is, you might have someone that might want to do owner financing. Now, a seller might want to do owner financing when the seller owns free and clear the house. So for example, I'm gonna give you an example of an owner finance that we just did with a client. So the client wanted an investment. She sold this house. This house was 100,000. It was worth 100,000 but it needed at least, at least $30,000 to get it, you know, to, 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 to be livable, to put it away and to be financeable because that's the thing. You might have a house that is free and clear, but if you don't have an air conditioning that works, if your plumbing is not okay, and I don't want to say it's not okay, it's not up to the standards that, you know, it should be according to, uh, you know, when you have an appraiser coming, they might be like, no, I cannot give you the money because your house, basically, people cannot live here by laws. And, you know, maybe you don't have a good roof and you don't have the money to repay it. So that's when you might consider doing owner financing if you want a little bit more money than just waiting for a cash investor to basically just take the property, you know, um, obviously underpriced because they are the only ones that are available to buy this type of investment. Now, if you are a seller, you might consider to do owner financing and there are two things that you can do. Either uh, an amortization schedule for either five, 10 years, 20 years. I saw a 20 year deal and that was incredible. But usually owner finance, they're short deals, five years, 10 years, because uh, owner finance, what you want is just basically, you know, to be the bank for a little bit, earn some money on interest if the buyer does not you know uh, pay or basically they default your mortgage because you're the one doing the owner finance then you can go ahead and do exactly what banks do sue the person go through the whole legal process and get the house back this is what is extremely important that you have always a good real estate lawyer and I'm going to see if I can bring one to the podcast because that way you know exactly what to do when things do not go the way they should go. Uh, remember that anytime we talk about investments and money, risk management is the key. If you're able to understand the good, the bad, and the ugly that can happen in a transaction, not only in the short, but in the long term, you're going to be successful. You're going to be less stressed because you're going to say, okay, this is how much money I'm willing, I want to make out of the owner financing. And I'm okay with the risk that if this person does not pay, I am okay to go ahead and go, you know, with all the legal force to do and take care of whatever I have to do. If you have a seller that is just shaking just for the thought of owner financing, so it might just not be a good idea because yes, you will make money, but it's a risk that you're taking um you know someone defaulting someone basically no paying so yes the property management is not fun and i'm going to give a kiss to all those property management people because it is not an easy job to do property management no one calls you happy no one <laughs> that an insurance i used to work for an insurance company no one ever calls you happy no one ever calls um i'm not going to say the name but it was it started with an s no one calls and they were like, oh, I'm so happy my insurance is so low. No, everyone will call and be like, I'm pissed off. That is exactly what sometimes owner financing can be because you're the one basically dealing with the risk of what's going to happen if they don't pay and so on. Now, this is not a problem. If you have a, a seller that is willing to do this and he or she, they have the resources to say, look, I have a lawyer in place. I have all this. Let's just do it. Then you go to the second question. Let's go ahead and do some numbers. How much will it cost you, um, you know, to do owner finance as a buyer? And how much can you make in owner finance as a seller? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do two amortizations. We're gonna do one straight amortization and I'm gonna show you basically the difference and we're gonna do a balloon payment amortization because these are the most common deals when you have owner financing. So let me go ahead and share the screen. 
Um, I'm not sure where the things are, but I'm going to go ahead and just grab them from here, right here. Okay, so we have the balloon and we have the regular one. Okay, so basically what you do, let's say that, you know, the house, and I'm just making here an example, okay? Let's just say that the house is $100,000. You got like a little nice house here in Daytona Beach that, you know, the prices are like going up like, like too fast to put it away. And then remember, the mortgage is not going to be 30 years. You probably will have something like five years or 10 years. Let's go ahead and do the worst scenario, five years. And then notice that the interest rates are very low. But if you're doing owner financing, you're going to bump up the rate a little bit more because you are the one taking the risk of doing this. So I'm just going to put a 4.5%, 4 but that is, that is up to the discretion of the seller. They can put six, they can put seven. And again, this is all negotiable. You need to always, when you're doing the listing, just tell your seller, what do you want and what is the range that you will be willing to accept in order to make this deal happen and that will make things easier. Communication and clarification. So I click calculate and boom. The monthly payments, this means for five years, for 60 months are going to be $1,864. Not that bad. Now, how do they find this total interest paid? Well, look what you're gonna do. If you multiply, um, if you multiply the payments, 1864.30 or 80, um, $1,864 with 30 cents, and you multiply times 60. Why 60? Because you're making 60 payments of $1,864 with 30 cents. This is going to show you that you have paid $111,858, but then you take your principal, which is uh, $100,000, and look what you have, 11,858, which he matches what the total interest pay is right here. So that's where the total interest pay comes up. If you click here, show amortization schedule, you can then see how the payments, right, are distributed. Uh, notice that amortization tables, uh, look what happens. The payment is gonna be fixed. That means that it's not going to change, okay? The principal, as you can see here, when the person makes a payment, like notice that the principal at the beginning is just going to be, right? So you're gonna, you're gonna go 489, 494, and then it's gonna start going up, 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 because when the time passes, what's gonna happen is that more, more to, for, for, from the $1864 that you're making the payment, the principal, you're gonna get 1489, for example, but then it's going to start increasing, and the interest, you're going to see that it's going to start decreasing so notice how the capital like what you put towards the capital is going to go up the interest is going to go down and that's how finally right you're able to pay back your um, your mortgage sometimes this can work uh but sometimes uh, you might have a buyer that might say i want to do a balloon payment because i don't want to pay this much money maybe it's a hundred thousand dollar the house let's just do a quick analysis you have a hundred thousand dollars but you have to put at least 30,000. And this house in the current market, all fixed, financeable and all that. Remember, we're assuming that the seller just wants to get rid of it and just wants to do a little bit of money. And he or she, they don't wanna do the repairs. And this is the reason why they're doing owner financing because they're like, let me just you know, make a little bit of money. But for the buyer, this is convenient to understand monthly payments, right? Plus how much money you're gonna to have to spend on the house because if you're getting a house for $100,000, but the same house uh, comparable, again, once you fix it, it goes for 150 and you only need to fix it for 20, you might wanna do this. You might wanna go ahead and just say, okay, I'm going to owner finance for five years because I'm gonna go ahead, fix the house, flip it, and bye-bye. Or you might just say, you know what, I'm just gonna fix it and I'm just gonna leave there and I'm okay with that. So you can go both ways. Now, an amortization schedule calculator, this is just if you're doing basically when you have equal installments, but you might want to do maybe a balloon a mortgage, and let's just do this one. And um, why? Well, the balloon mortgage calculator is just going to show you that the first, let's, we're going to do it for a five years. All the payments that you're going to be doing monthly are only going towards interest. So we're going to see how this is going to play in a balloon mortgage calculator. So let's say that you want to do 100,000, 
we're gonna do a five year mortgage and the rate here we're gonna put 4.5 i'm gonna tell you uh this type of loans do have a much higher rate than what the bank is gonna give you because obviously you're doing owner financing so it's not really that bad i think it all depends on you as an investor how how risk averse you feel about it but you also need to consider that borrowing money can be costly because if you're doing it with a bank the bank can manage the risk of you know if you don't default they have the resources but if you're an owner you know if you are basically like seller financing then you're gonna have to like you know you're gonna have a headache with you so let's just put 4.5 percent and look what's gonna happen so we do the terms and look the monthly payment remember the other monthly payment was like almost two thousand dollars it's only five hundred and six dollars but the balloon payment that you have to give at the end is going to be $91,664 with 26 cents. So let me just show you here. I think they have like, a, like an amortization table right here, right here. So look at this. Notice that in this table, the payments are going to be the same. Vanessa, why are they so low? Because they're only counting the interest, not the principal. Notice that uh, only a little bit goes to the principal much more goes for interest but then at the end okay at the end of the 60 basically after your five years are done you have to pay a huge and that's the reason why they call it balloon payment because it goes like up 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 and then boom you have the huge payment then you're going to have to do a payment of ninety one thousand six hundred and sixty four dollars and twenty six cents so what is the difference between having a basically like a regular amortization where your payment is fixed you're gonna have a much higher payment remember eighteen hundred dollars against a balloon um against uh, this balloon uh, mortgage where your monthly payments are going to be much more lower think about it 500 compared to 2000 and that might just give you time to basically like get the house together uh you know start uh, maybe renting it maybe you can start renting it for fifteen hundred dollars i'm talking about like you know on on let's just actually make more realistic numbers a hundred thousand dollar house maybe you can rent it for like twelve hundred but don't forget you're gonna have to fix the house and all that depending on the condition of the house but this is the start of how to do the math and tell your seller look this is how much money you can make over the interest right nothing happens if you have to do a, um, a, how do you call it? If you have to go ahead and go after the buyer because they didn't, they didn't default, we also need to take that in consideration. So is owner financing worth it? I think it is. I think if you understand what you're doing and if you have a network of plumbers, air conditioning people and everyone that just basically, because that's the hardest part, to get a good, network of people that you just call and you're like do i have a kitchen and everything for you and a plumbing come and give me a quote then that's honestly where the money goes because investment is all about timing and quality if you get like you know if you already have for example uh, an electrician that you have already used for several houses and if you start doing this as an investment career think about it when those people see your phone call they're like where do you want me to go <laughs> and I'll give you a good estimate. And that's how you start building up wealth, not only with money, but you also start building up relationships. And God, those are like worth every single penny. So just to recap, owner finance is just basically done when a seller might not be able to basically finance the house, you know, with a regular institution because the house might be destroyed in really bad condition. And they might think like, okay, I either gonna get cash, let's say the house is 100,000, a cash buyer is gonna come and basically, you know, undermine the price. But maybe you might do uh, owner financing. And then from there, you might say, I'm gonna do owner financing, but I want $100,000. I want, I want you to do it as a, you know, a balloon payment, or I want you to do it, you know, let's say if you're the seller and you say, I don't want any balloon payments, or what I want is my $1,800. So, this is good for you to tell your seller these are the options and obviously also to tell your buyer these are the options at the end of the day if the if both parties the numbers match it's a deal from heaven hopefully thank you so much i hope you enjoyed this uh, mini math tutorial i'm going to be doing bringing a little bit more excel 
little by little, I think sometimes people get a little bit nervous with Excel, but it's always going to be easy and it's always going to be fun. I promise you that. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time.